Hello everybody, it is Heather, and we are back with Tales of the Black Death, which this seems like a very, you know, encouraging chapter to start on. Mm -hmm. Not too far from the large orchid, orchard and off the footpath lies your house. From one generation to the other, olives have been at the center of your family's livelihood. The old home built by the great grandfather even bores a wooden carving of an olive tree. As you approach, you sense something strange and unfamiliar. The shutters on most of the windows are closed. Passing by the chicken coops, you notice chickens haven't been fed. You carefully push open the front door of your house. As the sunlight creeps in, a voice echoes in the darkness. Don't come in, my son. We are not well. Oh, no. The leaking voice of your father sends cold finger creeping up. Cold fingers, really, creeping up your spine. Some terrible illness has fallen upon your mother and me. Cough, cough. <laughs> you approach your parents slowly, but suddenly jump back in horror as you notice black patches covering their neck and hands. Oh, no. In the darkness, your mother's bloodshot eyes reflect the pale sunlight. Your father's sunken face, unrecognizable from the man he once was, turns to you. I fear we might be at the end of our long and harrowing journey. You hesitate in the doorway. <sighs> Stay with me. The air in the house is stuffy and dense. Alright, great, I'm probably gonna die. <laughs> you quickly open a window to let the breeze in. As you edge closer to your bedridden parents, your mother warns you of a strange fever before succumbing to a new coughing fit. Your father raises his tired voice. Son, a boat is beached near the pier. You mustn't go there. Please promise me, my son. After marrying those words, your father loses consciousness. No, Daddy, come back. I... Duh. I'm not sure what to do. The Misbegotten Village. At the edge of the Mediterranean Sea lies a small gathering of quaint houses connected by winding footpaths and leading to a century-old stone church. At the eastern part of the village you see the fish market near the docks. You tread down the cobblestone path and stop at the Tone Square. In this tightly knit community, you know only one person can truly help your parents. The priest had the doctor skip town and go to the pier. No, he had the doctor's office. The doctor lives in a large two-story home or house that dominates the street. The path leads to a clinic behind the house. A strange smell floats around the clinic. You follow the path and discover half a dozen men lying side by side on the ground, lamenting in pain. As you get closer, the asteroids stench becomes unbearable, forcing you to cover your nose with the sleeve of your shirt. In the barn that serves as a clinic, you notice a doctor operating on a nude man. He needs some clothes. With a sharp knife, he cuts open a neck sore and lets pus-like liquid come out. Oh, I always needed to read that. <laughs> you gag at the sight of the substance. Noticing you in the courtyard, the doctor comes out of the clinic, pulls out a makeshift mouth mask, and interrogates you. Balasar, what are you doing here? It's not safe for you to be at the clinic. Dot, dot, dot. Terrible illness is afflicting all of these men. Something I've never witnessed before. You have to leave at once. Okay. The doctor looks at you and wonders. Wait. The doctor walks over, reaches for your shirt, and pulls down the collar to examine your neck. I'm infected? I didn't know that. My poor boy, you are also infected. Come with me. The doctor places you on a small bed near the other man. 
Slowly you feel the fever grow in you. Where did I get this from? Great. Did I just kill myself in this game? <laughs> you want to leave the place, you want to go back home, but you no longer have the strength. Doctor tries various ailments and treats you, but sadly they all fail. I died. I am dead. I died from the Black Death. That's what I get for going to see my parents. Backtrack and make wiser decisions. Okay. Where did I go wrong? I think it's the grim homecoming. Let's try to figure this out. So we're back at the orchard off of the house. We've lived there our whole lives. My dad says, don't come in, we're not well. Some terrible illness has come over your mother and me. I've already read all this, though. Okay, so they have the Black Death. Hesitate in the doorway. So instead of staying with your sick parents, I should probably go to town to search for help. Abandoning your parents makes you feel conflicted inside. You hope you made the right decision. Well, the other decision got me dead, so... I don't need that. I can't... Oh, I can go to the doctor's office. I can't go to the dock because my dad told me to last time when I stayed to help. Uh, if I go to the doctor's office though when I get sick. Guess I'm gonna have to go see the priest. Not like he's gonna be able to do anything, but that's okay. All the streets in town lead to the church's front door. The stone church was built years ago and has become a place of solace, refuge, and peace. From this holy ground, the priest keeps a sturdy eye on his flock. You knock on the wooden door and wait, but no one comes to answer. Knock, knock. Knocking a second time, you realize the door isn't shut. You push on the heavy door and it opens, revealing the ornamented church interior. The benches are vacant, and at the end of the nave, the altar where the priest usually gives a sermon is bare. I could look for Looking for the doctor seems practical, but he seems overwhelmed by black death patients. I guess I'm just going to pray. I'm good at that. You kneel, bringing your hands together to close your eyes and pray in a low voice, asking for God to relieve the suffering of your parents. As you stand up, you send a presence behind you. You quickly turn to see a shadow disappearing through the open doors. Thinking of your ailing parents, you, parents, you leave the church. Yay, the cursed wharf. Oh, this sounds fun. Everything's a curse. Oh, it looks like we have fun. In the gray sky, seagulls circle the docks, hoping to find a discarded fish. The food market, usually buzzing with peddlers, is deserted, except for a few fishermen negotiating raw oysters and pickled herring. A slender boy grabs your attention as he passes behind one of the merchants and swiftly walks away with something tucked under his shirt. Without missing a beat, he disappears behind a food stand, only to emerge a few moments later after a few moments after right behind you. Okay. So what are you, the market watchman? Yeah, I saw you peeking my way. Oh, poor thing. I have a sixth sense about these things. After diving his hand under his shirt, the boy takes out a smoked herring. That's the reward for being nimble and clever. Okay. That's not going to do any good, so... When you travel the world as I did, survival becomes second nature. The boy tucks the smoke herring back into his shirt and starts to walk away, but reconsiders. My name is Lorenzo. You introduce yourself and mention your sick parents. That's strange. 
just near the pier. That's the merchant's boat stranded on the beach. The crew looked dead sick. Black patches, pale skin, mugged out eyes. Wonder if your parents were a victim of the same illness. Anyhow, I'm heading out of here. Small towns are not the best places for an amenity. Without another word, the boy leaves your side. Passing behind a few market stalls and walking between shadow and lit, the boy disappears. You thinking of your ailing parents and hesitate. The shipwreck feels so close. Not gonna go see a shipwreck full of dead people, that's gross. I mean, in real life I might, but... A grave return. Fuck, I don't like that. With a strange feeling of doom, you follow the familiar path leading up the hill to your house. The shade of the large oak trees and the ominous silence that close shutters all make your home look more secluded than ever. Prudently, you open the door and call out to your parents. Your calls are left unanswered, and you fear the worst. As you creep into your house, you find both of your parents dead in their beds. Their gaping mouths and bloodshot eyes staring into the oblivion are a horrible reminder that life is precarious. Telling yourself that at least they are no longer in agony doesn't give you any souls. leave them be because if I get near them I'll probably catch it. Corpses of your parents still in your head is a chilling and depressing sight. You feel giving them a proper burial could have appeased your soul or perhaps even theirs. In the distance you see the priest of the parish climbing up the hill to your house. He takes one look at you and shakes his head. Baldassar, you have my deepest consolences. Can't talk. You lower your head and stare at the ground. Sadly, I come bearing distressing news. You mean, like, other than my parents are dead? Authorities are arresting those who might have con have contact with this vile infection. Your name was mentioned. The doctor has ordered you be placed under quarantine. You take a step back, wondering what you should do. I came here to warn you. Your parents were devoted to the church. I'd hate to see their son die in a cell. I suggest you flee. Ask for a ceremony to honor my parents or advice. I'm going to honor my parents. The priest nods solemnly. As you wish. The priest starts a prayer for your parents. Close your eyes and take it all in. Tears drip down your cheeks, yet you feel strangely at peace. Footsteps interrupt the ceremony. Great, I should have just ran away. <laughs> Open your eyes and see two men holding spears. In a matter of seconds, they arrest you and take you to town, where you're placed in a large barn with the other villagers. That's not smart. Yay, I just killed myself again. This game is finicky. <laughs> Let me see where it backtracks me to. So it was something I did in finding my parents dead. Let's see. And the priest shows up and they're dead. Oh wow, it brought me all the way back to here.
I'm going to ask for advice and see if that changes anything. Thievery, blasphemy, bloodshed, or any of the unforgivable sins will ultimately lead to your despise. Some have fallen into despair and lunacy over the melancholy of madness. Choose your words and actions wisely. Sometimes they can be forgiven, but never are they truly forgotten. You nod solemnly. Oh, in Baldassar, do not lose yourself in foolish distractions. After those alarming words, the priest wishes you luck and bids you farewell. One of the clergymen is out of sight. You glance at the deathly house for one last time. Grief ridden, you decide it's safer to leave all your belongings behind as you begin to follow the road heading north. Forlorn. Unsure, you follow the dirt path that leads into the nearby forest. A darkness creeps in. A thin fog materializes. Rising over the pine trees, you can see the sails of the windmill pulling at the mist. Disgruntled, you sit on the grassy lawn at the base of the windmill and stare into the dark night. The thought of your dead parents keeps finding its way into your mind and your heart sinks down in your guilt. You try to hold back tears, but they just keep rolling off your cheeks. The wind dies down for a minute, and as the sails creak to stop, to a stop, you hear a voice behind you. Oh, God. Lorenzo, your parents are dead, aren't they? Just like the sailors near the wharf. Haphazardly wiping off my tears, you nod slowly. Lorenzo takes a seat beside you. In silence, you watch as the sun sets over the horizon until darkness engulfs the valley. As your belly growls, Lorenzo takes out of his pocket the piece of fish he stole from the market and cuts it in half and offers you a piece. Knowing very well the food was stolen from a merchant at the pier, you skip on the meal. You're proud of yourself, but still hungry. For a moment, you wonder if you're taking your own morality too close to heart. A faint glow appears from the church, and you wonder if the priest is having a nightly sermon to reassure his flock. The cross over the steeple serves as a reminder that God is your savior and protect the poor. Well, he's doing a good job on the Black Death, isn't he? Ugh. At least you hope he will. You are awoken by the sound of thunder and notice a storm is brewing in the sky. While you're still finding your bearings, Lorenzo's already packing his things. Come on. We're better not lingering too long in these parts. Especially if local authorities are on the lookout. Sharing Lorenzo's sentiments, you pack in haste. You see the first drops of rain on your forehead and before long the rain grows into an impressive flood. You mentioned to Lorenzo you can hear over to your haunt <laughs> you can head over to your aunt's farmhouse beyond the valley. With rain dripping from his chin, he nods in agreement. Walking down the hill, you wonder how you explain your sudden return to Camilla, and more importantly, how you announce the death of your parents. Something tells me we're not going to get to. Mud deep. These chapters are short. Not that that's bad. As quickly as it came, the storm drifts away, leaving Lorenzo and you soaking wet. Aww. The clouds part, and the early sun sh soon shines brightly, drying off your drenched clothing. As you hike up a small hill, you glance at Lorenzo. He seems to be in great spirits for a boy who didn't eat all morning and ventures onto a muddy road. You're about to say something when you notice a horse-pulled cart in the distance. The merchant cart appears to be stuck in deep in the mud. The stranger is pulling at the horse as his companions try to lift the heavy cart. As you approach, the stranger waves you over. As you prepare to walk towards him, Lorenzo places his hand on your shoulder. I don't think they're merchants. Indeed, clothed in rags and mismatched shoes, they look more like thugs or drifters. Wave back and leave the road. Go to the strangers. I don't like going near people at this rate, so I'm waving and going away. You start walking towards the ditch, and one of the strangers starts running after you. Afraid, you also start to run, but suddenly trip and fall into the muddy grass. 
And as you get your senses back, you realize you tripped over a dead man. Oh, that's lovely. They leave those everywhere these days. Lorenzo lends you a hand and quickly helps you to your feet. As two men are coming your way, Lorenzo takes out his knife. Oh, that sounds good. You guys stay back. Calm down, boys. That man was already dead when we found the cart. Look for yourself. Two men look at each other and grin. That's not good. I knew you'd understand. You walk over to the cart and Lorenzo joins you. Together you lift up the rear of the cart while the men try to slide the heavy wheel back on the axle. As the strangers secure the wheel, you keep having the feeling they lied to you in some way. Oh, I already figured that out. Once the wheel is properly attached, one of the strangers gives you a precautionary kick to test not you, the cart. They wrote that wrong. Huh. Looks like it's going to hold. Well, thanks for all the help. We couldn't have fixed this cart without you. Lorenzo observes you with suspicious eyes. Uh, yeah, I forgot. You guys wanted a reward. Decline the offer. Well, might as well get going then. Roadblock at the bridge. Probably have time for one more of these. Oh, crap. Walking down a grassy slope, you notice a river in the distance. Soldiers bearing long spears are blocking the access to the lone bridge. Further away, you notice a man pulling an old gray mule. A sickly, pale young boy is lying on the mule. Ugh. Lorenzo guards. Do you think this could have something to do with the stolen cart? I think it's better if we stay back. These guys can only mean trouble. Hide in the nearby bushes. You quickly hide in the nearby bushes. Lorenzo points out an iron cage wagon near the bridge. That cage is a death trap. Luckily the guards didn't see us. As you survey the area, Lorenzo shoves his pointy elbow into your side. Ow, really? Hey look, a path that leads under the bridge. By another word, Lorenzo sneaks past the bush and towards the river. He quickly follows suit, mimicking his every move, sneaking from shadow to shadow. Under the bridge, Lorenzo dips his boot in the river. No wonder they built a bridge. Look at this river. It's foaming at the mouth, ready to devour us alive. In the rapids, you make out a few rocks that can serve to cross the river. What do you think we should do? Uh, I'm going to go first, I guess. Carefully, you step on the stone closest to you, then jump to another large stone further in the river. You glance back and see Lorenzo following your every step. You spot another rock that could be a good landing point near the river bank, but as you get ready to jump, you are quickly halted by a muffled cry. No. You turn around and see Lorenzo quickly ducking into the bushes. In front of you, soldiers gather with spears. No. It's incredibly easy to catch the Black Death in this game. Quickly cover your face with your shirt. Because I didn't read it, pretty much we got caught and stuck in a cage with one of the sick people. That and I thought honestly we would get sick right away and just die and get to restart from where I was jumping on the rocks, but I guess not. After a while, the cart starts to move. The old mule falls behind it. You begin to understand this might be your last ride as the wagon feels like a death trap. Well, that's what we said before. As the iron cage passes below a tree, you hear a familiar croak. As you look up, you see a raven on a thin branch. A shiver passes through your spine. The crows are lurking. You look at the man sitting in front of the iron cage. Corvus. Crows. Ravens and rooks. They all smell death from miles away. 
Holding his son close to him, the father starts to caress the pale's the boy's pale forehead. Like I can read. I lost my wife this morning. Now my boy is sick. He needs a doctor. Not being stuck in a cage. And the crows, the ravens, and the rooks, they are watching. Frightfully, you look up to tree branches and count five ravens. That'd be cool, actually. You hear gagging as you look at the sickly boy. Black saliva covers his lips. That's gross, man. God himself sent us this disease. Oh, my brain, sorry. You nod in agreement while looking away from the sick child. We're all gonna feel it soon. And so will you. You lie down on the iron cage floor and close your eyes. The wagon travels the whole day and finally stops at nightfall. The guards set up camp not too far away from the iron cage. The night air is cold and the wind is relentless. On the opposite side of the iron cage, the father and son have managed to fall asleep, but from time to time the body of the young boy trembles with fever. You overhear the guards describing the rest of the journey and understand you have still have three long days trapped in this cage. You examine the father, his eyes sunken, he seems very pale, and deduce he might also be battling the infection. With great hesitation, you pull up your shirt to examine your body. You realize you are relieved not to find any black patches. Still, you feel a swelling in your throat. A whisper comes out of the darkness. Hey. It's me. Looks like you're still alive. Under the pale moonlight, you barely see, discern a small silhouette, but the voice is undeniable. It's Lorenzo. And guess what? Those soldiers are drunk as skunks. I managed to steal the keys off of one of them. Lorenzo edges closer to the cage. Baldazar, you don't look so good. Don't tell me that. Are you, you know, infected? Describe your throat and itchy eyes, hoping he'll brush it off as some allergies. Instead, he walks away from the iron cage. Aw, oh, you bitch. Sore and swollen throat. Show me your neck. You get closer to the cage and expose your neck and body. Relieved not to see any of those dark patches, Lorenzo continues. Maybe you caught some kind of flu sleeping out here. Better hurry up to your aunt so she can have a look at you. Let's ride the mule to save time. Lorenzo looks at the old man and the child behind you. They won't need it. That kid is already dead. So Lorenzo unlocks the iron cage. You feel your fever getting stronger. Man, don't tell me I caught this shit. Again. As soon as the gate opens, the father pushes you aside and carries his child to the mule. Get out of my way. This is my mule and I need it. You will be damned if you're stealing it from me. Lorenzo grabs the bridle attached to the mule's head. We're taking this mule, old man. Right, Baldassar? Feverish, you push the old man aside and climb on the mule. Lorenzo jumps on in front of you and whips the old animal. As you flee, you look at the blurry scene behind you, the father kneeling on the ground holding his dying child. You will be damned. Lorenzo rides the mule into the dead of night, following the narrow path that leads to your aunt's house. Oh, so I did catch it. That's amusing. I want to see where it takes me back to, and then next time we'll try to make better choices. This is a. I've never seen a game do that. It took me all the way back to the dirt path and the windmills. Alright, I'm gonna save this here, and next time we'll come back and try to see what we can do. Hope you enjoy it. Leave a like, leave a comment, and we'll see you in the next one. Later.